Welcome to AHTCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are going to talk about a 44 year old female who came to emergency with complaints of breathlessness. Um, shall we start? Uh, patient, a 44 year old female presented to here with complaints of breathlessness. Uh, starting with the primary survey, airway appears to be patent, there are no secretions and uh, <clears throat> no any added uh, strider or anything absent. Airway was patent. Coming to breathing. Uh, respiratory rate was 36 breaths per minute and uh, saturation was 75% on 10 liter oxygen and uh, the air entry was bilaterally equal with uh, crepts on the right lower zone and the left lower zone. So we, uh, as it's already in 10 liter oxygen and saturation was only 75%, we changed it to, to NRBM mask with 15 liter oxygen was started. Okay. Next coming to the circulation. Uh, BP was 110 by 80 and pulse rate was 110 per minute. At this point, two large IV bore cannula were placed and blood samples were taken and ABG was taken. Next, uh, disability, GCS was E4, V5, M6 and pupils were 2 mm and bilaterally reacting. And exposure, temperature was febrile, 101 degree Fahrenheit was there. So at this point of time, 1 gram PCM IV was given. Uh, reassessing the vitals, now the saturation was 86% on uh, 15 litre oxygen. As the patient wasn't uh, achieving her saturation, patient was started with uh, an IV positive pressure ventilation of uh, 12 is to 6. Was she till, still tachypneic? That yeah, she was still tachypneic of 30 beats per minute okay. and she was started on an IV and uh, 12 is to 6 was started and uh, FiO2 was increased to 100% mm -hmm. at this point of time. And uh, the ABG which was taken uh, was showing pH of uh, 7.3 and uh, PCO2 of uh, 15 mm and uh, PO2 of 65. There was uh, no acid based disorder but patient was having type 1 respiratory failure. Mm -hmm. What was the PO2 FO2 ratio? ABG? PO2 FO2 ratio was 68 mm. 68, 68. Uh, PAO2 was 68 and FAO2 was 100%. We okay, uh, okay. put on 100% on NIV. Okay, okay. Uh, next, uh, coming to the other adjuvant of the airway, uh, adjuvant of the primary survey, we have taken an ECG mm. which was showing sinus tachycardia. Mm. And uh, after giving the PCM, her uh, temperature had uh, become normalized and the pulse rate fell to 88 per minute, ma'am. Mm. So, Apart what are the DDs at this point of time? <laughs> At this point of time, uh, patient presented with breathlessness mm. and uh, there were crepts mm. present on auscultation. Mm. So at this point of time, we can expect to be an LRTA initially, mm. LRTA or we can expect any to be uh, pulmonary edema, cardiogenic or nephrogenic mm. any cause of pulmonary edema. But in the ABG taken, creat was in the normal range, so we had ruled out uh, nephrogenic, nephrogenic pulmonary edema. It can be cardiogenic pulmonary edema or uh, it can be pulmonary embolism. Uh, LRT bilateral crepes was there, so it can be LRT atypical pneumonia or something. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we uh, did a point of care uh, ultrasound. Uh, okay. In ultrasound, uh, there were no any specific B lines, any no B lines or A lines, uh, like B lines found. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, lung sliding was present throughout. The so, if ultrasound chest is normal, then what can it be? can still be pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism. If there is no B line seen, we need to highly suspect pulmonary, pulmonary embolism. embolism. Okay. And uh, now coming to the secondary survey. This 44 year old female known case of allergic rhinitis and uh, with complaints of fever and rhinitis since uh, five days, four days, since four days. Patient was first initially evaluated in outside hospital and was given injection PCM. And then she had a, next day she had a fall in BP and was given one point DNS bolus. Okay. After that. Since uh, how long this started? Uh, four days history of fever and uh, rhinitis. Okay. And <coughs> initial day there was fever. So when she visited local hospital, they had just given a PCM. Next day again, she had complaints of fever again. When she visited the hospital, then they noticed there was a BP fall and they had given one point DNS bolus and she responded to fluid therapy. But uh, th th fourth day when she had gone, today morning she had gone to the local hospital, there were even bilateral V's and crepts. So she was nebulized with acetylene and started on injection doxycycline as the antibiotic. And uh, later 
where she had a saturation fall to 85 percent, for which she had been referred to our hospital for further management. Mm. So right now, uh, outside hospital, I even taken a CT done, and in the CT there were uh, multiple large wedge-shaped consolidations and uh, ground glass opacities in bilateral, posterior, and lower zone. There are ground glass opacities with mild pleural effusion. That okay. was the CT report. No? Mm. And they categorized it as Corrads three. Okay. So, uh, uh, and uh, from head to toe examination, patient has no any ectrus, pallor, uh, lymphadenopathy, pinopedal edema. And uh, on oscillate, on chest uh, respiratory system examination, <coughs> the patient is having uh, air entry bilaterally were present and uh, right middle and lower zone crepitations was present along with left lower zone crepitations were present. And uh, there is no any raised JVP and there is no any added heart sounds. sounds. And no bilateral, uh, no edema also. These were the examination findings. So at this point of time, we even repeated an X-ray from our hospital, mm. and it was showing haziness, ground glass uh, haziness, uh, bilateral lower zones. Okay. And uh, depending see? upon the uh, uh, ABG, we can say there is a type one respiratory failure, and calculating the PF ratio, that is PaO2 by FaO2, mm. it was less than. Uh, 100. Mm -hmm. It is uh, around 68 on initial presentation. So, okay. if we have to follow the Berlin's criteria for uh, ARDS, mm -hmm. uh, first thing you need to have is uh, within a one week development of the respiratory symptoms, which progressed within last one week. In mm -hmm. this case, only four days was the duration. Mm -hmm. And second thing is. So, this patient, uh, okay, continue. Second uh, point in Berlin's criteria is there should be a radiological. Uh, confirmation on X-ray or CT about bilateral involvement of the ground glass opacities, mm. which cannot be explained by uh, like uh, consolidation or effusion. Mm. Or collapse. Or mm. collapse. Mm. And third would be ruling out the heart failure condition, cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Mm. In this case… Respiratory failure, uh, which is not, not explainable by, explained by a fluid overload no. condition like a cardiac failure. Okay. And patient shouldn't have any associated features of a cardiac failure like S3 gallop, such sounds shouldn't be there. On clinical examination, there are no any features so of… Can you repeat the Berlin's criteria one more time? First would be the… Features of uh, respiratory uh, acute symptoms, onset acute onset, onset respiratory symptoms within lasting within one week. week. Second will be radiological confirmation of uh, bilateral, bilateral involvement of uh, any features which cannot be explained by any. Which is not an effusion or a collapse no. or a consolidation. consolidation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And third would be uh, respiratory failure not explainable by the cardiogenic uh, pulmonary edema causes. Uh, which can be proven or any fluid overload condition which can be explained by the clinical examination or even sending laboratory investigation like nt pro bnp in this case nt pro bnp was 450 so okay. here it was ruled mm -hmm. and the fourth important parameter would be the pao2 by p uh, fao2 okay. ratio at peep of 5 mm hg this is the new addition ad mm -hmm. added uh, definition if the ratios less than 300, then it will be involved as the ARDS and mm. depending upon the ratio, we categorize into mild, moderate and severe. Mild would be 200, greater than 200 and less than 300, moderate would be 100 to 200 and severe will be less than 100. Mm. Okay. So, this patient, can you tell this patient's PO2 by FAO2 was only 68? 68. Can so you tell it as severe ARDS? Yes. We can't tell because initially ABG was taken without a peep of 5 centimeter. Six, uh, we put NIV and then we'll get 6 mm G was there. Peep. So you can wait for one more hour and then, then take. Did. So initially ABG wise, this uh, looking like severe ARDS, but with this peep of 5 centimeter of water only, we should tell it is severe ARDS. Okay. So, uh, what is the mechanism of action of ARDS or pathophysiology? Pathophysiology is actually <laughs> uh, like initially there would be the so, uh, edematous phase, first mm. 0 to 7 days, there would be a collection of the fluids, the uh, exudative material into the alveoli. Mm. Then there will be hyaline membrane formation, which is being produced with the type 2 surfactant cells, that would be 7 to 14 days. Mm. Next would be the inflammatory phase, where there would be uh, the fibrotic changes. Mm. Happening finally in the mm. third phase, uh, 14 to 21 days. So, what all are the etiologies? What all will cause ARDS? What are the etiologies? In the etiologies, we can discuss like uh, most commonly it will be in the settings of IC, it will be a sepsis causing mm. any point of the body sepsis or even the lung sepsis like pneumonias can also involve in this. Mm. And apart from that, uh, uh, other uh, clinical conditions like pancreatitis will be mm. causing and uh, 
burns burns hmm. leptospirosis Leptospir- any viral hmm. traumatic causes or transfusion related uh, ards can also happen so uh, what is happening is there will be a inflammatory cascade which is happening uh, and uh, there will be ex- uh, release of tumor necrosing factor interleukins these things and all and there will be uh, and it will be produced and it will be more production will be more in the alveolar region and rest of the region and there will be vasodilatation of the blood vessels around that alveoli so there will be more of interstitial fluid collected and that will lead to ards okay mm. next uh, like uh, ne- the main strategy would be the ventilation uh, mm. protocol which we use. so what ha- what was did for this patient um, initially for this patient uh, niv was started we started yeah. with the niv and <laughs> i mean initial for the stabilization as soon as the urine primary survey niv was put on mm. but once the diagnosis of ards is made we converted it to hfnc in the initial mm. to increase the amount of oxygen delivery so did the po to fo to ratio improve uh, for the first 3 uh, days uh, we targeted ventilatory strategies like intermittent proning and hfnc with high flow 50 liter per minute with 100% fo2 but there was no severe su- like uh, clinically she was getting better hmm. with the aeration but uh, x ray wise and the po to fo ratio never improved so then we proceeded to, to niv for next 4 uh, days at uh, during that time the x ray improved and her po2 to fo2 ratio is in okay so when will you consider intubation in a case of ards in moderate and severe ards uh, mm-hmm. the uh, we had the ventilation strategies advising us to mechanically ventilate the patient, patient. so that we can take over her lung aeration mm-hmm. okay okay so how how will you plan on uh, in, uh, ventilation Uh, we have a protocol uh, ards net protocol to be followed first thing we have to do is we have to calculate uh, uh, predicted body weight mm-hmm. uh, predicted body weight in males would be 50 plus 2 uh, 50 plus uh, 2.3 2 uh, inches 50 plus 0.91 into height in centimeter minus 152.4 mm-hmm. this would give us the predicted body weight first mm-hmm. after that we need to our target will be 6 ml per kg tidal volume of that 6 ml per kg of the predicted, predicted body, body weight. weight. So either you can use it based on centimeter or in this it will be 50 plus 2.3 into height minus 60. 60. height in inch minus 60 yes. okay, that is in males and in females 45.5 45.5 plus uh, 2.3 into height, height minus, minus 60. 60 so 6 ml per kg of predicted body weight is the uh, tidal <laughs> volume which should need to be targeted what is the name of that tidal volume low tidal, tidal volume, low tidal volume ventilation volume, yes. so that is the planned tidal volume that is to be kept in this patient then here in this patient the predicted body weight was 52.4 kg and tidal volume is 314 ml per so that should be the targeted Target. tidal volume okay once the tidal volume is set then what can, are what are the other settings we will keep uh, what yeah, mode of ventilation will you select you can select any tide, uh, ventilator like pressure support or the volume support but uh, the, there are certain criteria which we should be meeting one hmm. we should target tidal volume of uh, 6 ml per kg and peak plateau of 30 Mm. is to be targeted so what is uh, mm. what is a different uh, in ards ventilation it is always preferred to con- uh, keep a pressure control ventilation what is the problem in keeping volume control ventilation if you keep volume control ventilation to deliver the specific volume the machine can uh, exceed the peak plateaus and it can cause barotrauma will not have the complete control over the okay so that means in volume control we are keeping a volume no, no. so ventilator will try to give that volume to the patient and the uh, ventilator won't be checking what pressure to be given so it can give excess pressure yeah. what will happen if you are giving excess pressure in a ards patient because there is already proteinaceous material in the alveoli there will be excess the excess pressure will be delivered causing the alveoli to rupture or there can be chance of the- Mm-hmm. alveolar rupture usually happens with normal uh, alveoli uh, some uh, uh, the areas which is not ventilated or already collapsed with the proteinaceous material will not get ventilated whereas a normal area will get over distended and it might rupture and cause a pneumothorax uh, yes so uh, we will have to ge- keep a low tidal volume ventilation is targeted here for keeping a low tidal volume we need to set a a uh, certain pressure so pre- in pressure control ventilation we can ke- keep the pressure we can set the maximum pressure peep and all we can uh, set but volume control we won't be able to set ventilator will try to deliver that volume with whatever pressure it wants okay 
here uh, so we will keep a pressure control ventilation then low tidal volume mm. then and then uh, we will target respirate less mm. than 35 will not exceed that okay and then uh, we will uh, see that the ph we have to target 7.35 ah, no no uh, rest of the ventilator settings so we have told about the pressure yes, then respiratory rate and I saturation 88 to 95 percent percentage SPO2 will be or pao2 of 55 to 80 mm mm. other parameters in ventilator uh, first uh, depending on this we will decide whether uh, peep and fao2 will be set to get this mm. parameters that mm. will follow the sliding scale of low peep high fao2 or high FAO, uh, low fao2 high peep high peep okay. any sliding scale we can use and target that mm. and uh, peak plateau of less than 30 cm h2 we will be targeting so what is peak plateau it's the uh, peak pressure of system peak pressure of the whole yeah. How will you get P plateau? During the inspiratory phase, the mm. pause the system. Ah, inspiratory hold you will have to give. So, in a patient who is getting ventilated, we will be giving an inspiratory pressure. Mm. And it uh, during expiration, there will be peep. But there will be a plateau pressure which is maintained in the lungs. Mm. That is P plateau. That that can be checked only by giving uh, keeping an inspiratory hold. We will have to press on inspiratory hold. The ventilator itself will tell what is the P plateau of the uh, of that lung. Okay, so um, that we need to keep uh, doing the ventilator by keeping an inspiratory hold. Okay, so uh, so there is inspiratory pressure, expiratory pressure. There will be a plateau pressure. So that is a pressure which is during the inspiration. Maximum pressure during inspiration is called P max. P max. This is the stable pressure. Uh, that is a static pressure in the uh, lung is called as the uh, P plateau. That P plateau should be less than thirty. If uh it is exceeding 30 then we can decrease the tidal volume from 6 gradually to 4 ml per kg. Mm. What will happen if it is worsening more than 30 P plateau? That means pressure, pressure is more. more. So there is higher chance barotrauma. of barotrauma. Okay. So at that point we can reduce the tidal volume mm. uh, or increase the respiratory rate. But <laughs> we should see that it will not worsen the respiratory rate more than 35 even. Okay. And if uh, P plateau is uh, less than like 25, at that point then we can increase the tidal volume requirement from 6 to little bit till 8 ml per kg also. Okay. What is driving pressure? Driving pressure is the difference between mm. the P plateau and the peep. Uh, peep. peep plateau and, and peep. peep. Mm. Uh, that driving pressure can be used as a prognostic tool whether uh, the patient is getting better or worse during the course of this day. Mm. And uh, driving pressure also, if it is less than 15, it is better. better. Good. Okay. Good. So, uh, how we, so we have told about the tidal volume, what respiratory rate to be kept. Okay. Now, what will be the PEEP which you will keep? To target the F uh, SPO2, we increase the PEEP or, uh, with low FAO2 as per the sliding scale we follow. Okay. So, uh, suppose you are planning to keep a low high. FAO2 and high PEEP. So, how will you titrate? What PEEP you will keep? We start with higher peeps of 10 and ah, So, uh, there is an optimum peep for every patient. So, uh, we need, to, uh, why we are, what is the idea of keeping a peep? So, the alveoli get distended. Alveolar distension and we wa we don't want the alveoli to collapse. collapse. So, uh, usually the physiological peep, peep is 5. five. Okay. So, in an ARDS patient, what has happened? The complaints of the lungs is reduced because uh, because of the fluid or secretion, whatever it may be. So, we need to find the optimum peep of the patient. So, gradually if you are keeping as 5, you can slowly increase 1 centimeter, like 6, 7, like that you can slowly increase. Uh, so, you can keep in 6 and see what is the change in ventilation or uh, tidal volume that is happening. And after that, you can increase to 7. Uh, it might improve a little bit more. Uh, even oxygenation might improve. So, based on that, we will find the optimum peep. You can increase to maximum. So, suppose at 10, you are getting a maximum tidal volume and uh, oxygenation is happening. And after that, you can, if you are increasing it to 11, that uh, sometimes that much tidal volume won't be reached. So, 10 was the optimum peep for that patient. So, we need to find out the optimum peep for that individual and we will have to set. Okay. And I is to your ratio. Uh, here, uh, as this uh, case of hypoxemia, we prefer uh, increased interval of inspiration as compared to expiration. Mm. 
uh, mostly we keep an i is to e ratio how one is to two one is to uh, we give more time for expiration in certain scenarios if oxygenation is affected we will have to plan on reverse uh, uh, reverse ventilation that means uh, we will keep i is to e ratio less than one like we will give more inspiratory time but only if there is this uh, oxygen oxidation is affected right. okay and our ph goal should be 7.3 to 7.45 okay if the ph is reducing uh, then we need to if ph is increasing then we have to reduce the respiratory rate and if ph is decreasing uh, if there is uh, then we can think of increasing the tidal volume mm. and still if the ph is not, uh, less than 7.1 we can think of giving even soda bicarb as uh, additional adjunct okay next uh, comes the criteria for weaning once the pao to P fao to ratios are getting better mm, okay so uh, suppose uh, that is only if the patient improves what if the patient is not improving you we have kept it ards ventilation low tidal volume we have kept the respiratory rate p plateau we have kept less than 30 we have kept uh, um, fao to p i is to e ratio everything what is the patient is not improving then we have to think about additional ventilatory strategies like uh, proning the patient Prone. Mm. And the other thing would be even uh, uh, increasing the PEEP for a sh short duration to recruit extra uh, alveolar. Mm. That is alveolar, alveolar recruitment. Alveolar recruitment can be tried and respiratory physiotherapy should be tried. Okay. So, uh, recruitment and proning we will be planning only if the PO to FA2 ratio is less than 150. 150. 150. So, mm. what is recruitment? Uh, basically, the in the amount of the total amount of the alveoli which is working in the uh, ventilation, mm -hmm. if, uh, in ARDS it will be the amount of the lung will be in affected. So the total lung is not involved in the ventilation. Mm -hmm. So we want to recruit those parts of the lung which are not being used mm -hmm. uh, as a patient. So is, the non-ventilated alveoli is recruited, place. recruited for. Oxygen, oxygen exchange okay so patient lying in the supine the posterior segments are affected because they does not allow for expansion of the posterior segments so once we uh, allow the patient to do proning no recruitment uh, in the recruitment like the strategies to involve so how will you recruit by giving intermittent high positive expiratory. So, you are seeing that patient is on ventilator, you have kept a tidal volume, uh, 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 you have planned a tidal volume, you have kept a higher PEEP, you are not getting that much uh, tidal volume. We you know that the tidal volume is not reached because the, uh, all the alveolis are not recruited. So, for recruiting, you can plan on recruitment. That also is having some um, Contraindications: If the patient is having a tendency for pneumothorax, these situations we are not, we won't do. And if the patient is on multiple supports, we won't be recruiting. But if the patient is otherwise okay, we can plan recruiting. That means peep. This patient we have told peep yeah. we are kept as ten. You can increase the peep to forty. Hmm? And you, but you shouldn't go away from the patient. You should be with the ventilator, see what is happening, and you can, so for. Uh, 35 to 40 seconds you will keep a higher peep very high peep so that that because of that much positive pressure some alveolis will get recruited that is recruitment so that will happen only for some seconds so you have to be with the patient in the ventilator for that much second for that much uh, period of time less than one minute time so 40 seconds we will keep a higher peep between 26 to 40 that much high peep we will be getting so that the, because of that positive and expiratory pressure, some alveolis which have collapsed will get opened. That is recruitment. And if you, then we will have to change the PEEP settings to the primary setting and we can see the improvement. Additional improvement. Okay. Then, uh, then proning. proning. What is proning? Proning is changing the position of the from supine mm. to prone position. Prone position. So the posterior segments can aerate well. Mm. Okay. And next is respiratory So, uh, what are the contraindications for proning? Patient, if patient is on multiple supports mm. and if patient is like having any facial burns, chest burns or mm. any... Sorry, recent abdominal recent surgery, abdominal. any spine surgery. Pregnant female. Mm. In such patients, relative we are not supposed to prone. contraindications of patient not able to prone if there is any, like uh, if the patient is having any edematous face or no. Okay, so patient, this patient was conscious, so we can in, give an intermittent conscious proning. Mm. In a ventilated patient, how much time will you prone? 16 to 18 hours we prone mm. and then get back. 16 to 20 hours back. you can prone the patient. And uh, what is the advantage of proning? 
for the posterior segments to oh. have areas maximum area of the lung is posterior, posterior aspect so uh, for recruiting that much of the alveoli and oxygenating we can prone the patient okay so this proning recruitment and rest of the ventilator strategies will be done only if the patient's symptom is less than 7 days after that that uh, area might have consolidated and might have damaged so within 7 days only you will have to do all these things okay uh, what if all this fails so all this fails you can plan on ecmo uh, and management uh, adjoints uh, we can uh, plan okay we can start with gluco, uh, okay. What are the other uh, complications which can happen in ARDS ventilation? Complications, barotrauma. Barotrauma, pneumothorax. And another thing is uh, ventilated associated pneumonia. Pneumonia, uh, pulmonary embolism. embolism. And uh, most often there will be even delirium that uh, oh. ICU de psychosis kind of. Okay, what is uh, that in intubated patient it, it is unlikely <laughs> to have uh, ICU psychosis. What is autopeep? Auto peep is because we in such this patient we are keeping an higher peep. So what will happen? The intrathoracic pressure will increase and that will cause the cardiac output. Uh, that will reduce the cardiac output and patient will go into hypotension. That is auto peep. Okay. So that is also one complication which I, it can happen in all kinds of ventilation. Uh, this auto peeping can happen. So in a normal patient, in some other patient, uh, if the patient is going to hypertension, we have intubated the patient. After some time, we saw the patient's BP has dropped. What will you do to remove the auto peep from the system? You can disconnect the ET tube and the ventilator for some time so that that pressure effect will go and you can reconnect. Uh, in ARDS, we won't do that because we want a peep inside the body to open the alveoli. Okay. Next. Uh, then the, how will you plan on weaning? Uh, plan on the weaning, first we need to check FAO2. Uh, oh. If it is less than 40% FAO2, the, like criteria to start weaning is FAO2 less than 40, peep less than 8 mmHg and there are, uh, systolic blood pressure more than 80 mmHg with no supports. Oh. When, and patient has uh, conscious spontaneous breathing efforts. Once these are achieved, then we can plan on weaning. Mm. In plan, uh, after uh, there we should give a spontaneous breathing, breathing trial. So TP is connected or the ET tube or anything is connected and only F oxygen is given. We aim for 120 minutes and then if there is no failure then we can plan on weaning. Mm. The failure signs would be heart rate greater than 120 or accessory use of muscles, sweating and marked uh, distress or dyspnea. These are there then we can call it as failure and we should mm. continue treat. Okay. Uh, when will you tell that it is successful spontaneous breathing trial? When more than 30 minutes patient is able to continue like without any signs of so uh, okay so for 120 minutes we will be giving a uh, spontaneous mm -hmm. breathing mm -hmm. trial and if the patient is able to tolerate more than 30 minutes mm -hmm. that means a good mm -hmm. sign mm -hmm. and if you are taking a abg after a spontaneous breathing trial ph should be more than 7.3 7.3 and while giving that spontaneous breathing trial if the patient itself is able to breathe and keep a tidal volume more than 4 ml per kg that is also a good mm -hmm. sign and uh, that repeat abg which we are taking should have a PO2 of at least more than 60 millimeters of mer um, 60 mm -hmm. and uh, saturation also should be maintained more than 90. 90. Okay. Next, uh, in this case, uh, we right now use a uh, infusion of oxyptidyl. Mm. It is a human vasoactive peptide. Mm. This helps to reduce the inflammatory activity okay. in the body and reduces the progression of the ARDS. Mm. In this case also we had used this infusion, it's actually started day one, we give, uh, depending on the body weights, uh, the dosage is calculated, on day one, uh, one vial will be given, day two, two vials and day three, three vials will be given. Duration of each infusion is 14 hours and uh, day two and day three when we start the infusions, it should be started preferably at the same time the day one's infusion has started. Mm. Okay, anything else? Uh, uh, in this Antibiotics? Antibiotics, uh, initially empirically we started with uh, coverage, uh, covering broad spectrum by using uh, carbipinum and uh, azithromycin and even uh, antiviral by using flu as the choice. Mm -hmm. uh, later only meropinum was uh, used for continued and uh, the blood count showed a negative procal, procal was only point. So it was a viral, viral kind of a picture. Okay.
ओके ओके व्हाट आर द अदर थिंग्स स्टेरॉइड्स वाज इट गिवन यस मैम लाइक इनिशियली वी स्टार्टेड गिविंग डेक्सामेथासोन एज इट्स अ हाईली एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटरी 8 एमजी पर डे वाज गिवन फॉर स्टू डेज देन वी कैन गिव अप टू 20 एमजी पर डे ओके देन वी कंटिन्यू डेली आईवी स्टेरॉइड बाय यूजिंग सोलोमेट्रोल ओके सो मीदेल प्रेग्नेसलोन इज दि मीदेल प्रेग्नेस प्रेग्नेसोल मेट्रोल प्रेग्नेसोलोन सो मीदेल प्रेग्नेसलोन इज द ड्रग् ऑफ चॉइस यू लव टू गिव 1 एमजी पर केजी पर डे ओके दैट इज अ स्टेरॉइड एंड हाउ विल यू मैनेज द इनपुट आउटपुट ऑफ दिस पेशेंट आइडियली दिस पेशेंट्स वी विल प्रेफर टू कीप अ नेगेटिव बैलेंस सो दैट द देयर कार्डियोजेनिक विल नॉट प्रिवेंट फ्लूइड ओवरलोड because the lungs is getting improved only so we don't want unnecessary overload for the patient so we'll have to keep the a negative diuretics. balance negative balance okay mm-hmm. yeah, so by ki- giving diuretics, diuretics and reducing the input between 500 to 1 liter we'll have to keep a negative balance okay then then uh, other things would be the icu protocol like dvt prophylaxis mm-hmm. as a patient is uh, so non mobile mm-hmm. and the other thing would be to stress ulcer prophylaxis mm-hmm. by giving sucralfate or pan bd okay another another thing is there if if at all you are intubating and ventilating the patient uh, do not uh, we want the patient to be completely sedated and paralyzed because we are taking over the patient's ventilation so that the lungs can improve but suppose if the patient is triggering uh, we can give sedate intermittent sedation and intermittent neuromuscular blocking agents don't put it as a continuous neuromuscular blocking agent because uh, it can cause critical illness okay. neuropathy and all okay then anything else in this case the patient uh, after uh, first was put on hfnc and after that we increase it to niv sed mode once the uh, three days of niv was done and with proning her also her uh, recruitment like uh, her pod fa to ratio improved to 170 180 and then she was again uh, titrated back to hfnc and nasal prongs mm. and uh, during the discharge time we had to discharge her with one liter oxygen and she was able to do her regular activities mobile and everything Okay. And okay. X-ray also improved. X-ray was also improved. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm.